Hello guys, my name is Nick. I have recently deployed full-blown VMware vSphere Home Lab based on Intel Nuke platform and decided to share my experience with you. Through a short series of videos, I will guide you through hardware components I'm using as well as software. I would like to start with the background and tell you a little bit about my initial objectives and possible solutions which I was considering. So, my main goal was to build a full-blown home lab for testing various technologies. VMware vSphere, NSX, VRNI, VRA, VRO and anything else that runs on top of vSphere. If you ask me, I don't know any restrictions that vSphere may have unless we are talking about some specific hardware appliances. So, for example, if you want to deploy a Kubernetes cluster, or you need a lot of Cisco CSR routers, this sphere is a very good choice. I came up with three ideas of how to build it. The first one is VMware Workstation running on my desktop. The second is a public cloud-based lab, for example, AWS or Google Cloud. And finally, home lab. Let's talk about each of these options. VMware Workstation may look pretty good since it is just a single physical device and you don't have to maintain all the hardware, separate storage, cabling, power management, etc. Also, depending on your current situation and hardware you already have, it can be more beneficial in terms of your expenses. In my particular case, price would have been more con than pro and here is why. Currently I have Intel i7 CPU with 4 physical cores and 8 virtual cores and 32 gigs of RAM. If you want a full-blown NSX deployment, it is not enough. Let me show you my estimation. According to my estimation, you need at least 22 virtual CPUs and 47 gigs of RAM. And you need it only for infra infrastructure components. But you also need some workloads for testing, right? So you can go for a new i7, which supports up to 64 gigs of RAM. But I think that you probably should go for i9. CPU, which supports up to 128 gigs of RAM. In my case, it means that I need a new top-level CPU, new motherboard and new RAM, which is pricey, of course. But upgrading your desktop is a double-purpose investment. If you are tired of all that IT stuff, you can still play games. Now, let's talk a little bit about cons. Single physical device is a single point of failure. So, if you are going to access it from another location, for example, office, hotel, cafe, you probably don't want to lose your entire lab because of some minor issue like unplugged power or network cable or host operating system bug. Also, you can't really use your desktop for anything heavy if you are already running full vSphere and NSX lab inside. So, you have to power off your lab, do your stuff, for example, play video games, run the video or something similar. And uh, when you are done with that, you can power your lab back again. In case of a single VM, it is okay, but doing the same with vSphere, which is designed as an enterprise class solution, uh, isn't very convenient and flexible. Next point is type 2 hypervisor. If you use VMware Workstation, it means that you have to install your ESXi host on top of Workstation, which runs on top of your physical uh, PC operating system. So you have your physical PC, which runs some kind of operating system. In my case, it is Win10. Inside it, you have VMware Workstation. And inside VMware Workstation, you have your ESXi hosts. I'm not saying that it doesn't work, it works great in general and I use such environments, but it has performance penalty and may have some limitations which you don't want to encounter after investing in i9. And if you have i9 and 128 gigs of RAM, you definitely need some cooling. 
Besides money, it is also much more complicated in installation than a Nuke platform, at least for me. And the final drawback is lack of scalability. You can try to scale it out using workstation and bridging its network into your physical network, but in my opinion, it is more complicated than this uh, ASXi. And if you are already using top i9 CPU, you can't really scale it up until Intel starts selling new and more powerful CPUs. You can try Intel Xeon CPU, but I think it won't be a desktop, a desktop anymore. So in my opinion, and according to my objectives, this solution isn't reliable, isn't flexible, and has potential issues. So let's consider the second option, which is public cloud. It has very attractive advantages like lack of physical devices and therefore lack of maintenance. It is much more reliable than anything you can build yourself. It has a huge number of additional cloud features like public IPs, load balancers, monitoring, logging, storage and many many more, which work out of the box in most cases. And finally, clouds are really friendly and easy to use. But all these advantages don't really matter when you start calculating price. Remember that you need pretty big compute instances, and in my case it is a long-term investment, which I am going to use for at least one year. One year of a cloud usage is more expensive than buying new cluster in my case. And in the end of the period I will have literally nothing physical and in case of new clap I will have a lot of hardware which I may sell or repurpose somehow. Also, international cloud providers like AWS and Google Cloud don't have very good availability in Russia. Obviously, I live in Russia, uh, since our government can block access to them. And it will be a nested virtualization solution, which may have similar issues like VMware Workstation has. But maybe there are some native SXI offers or some improved nested environments. So if you really want a cloud solution and money isn't an issue, I think you, you can find something uh, suitable for you. And finally, I have additional maintenance. Uh, if you want to save your money, uh, you can configure cloud parking, which will power off your lab when you don't need it. But remember that it is a full-blown vSphere, not a single Linux VM. You can't just randomly power it, power it off and on and expect that everything is safe and no corruption happened to your storage. To summarize, I think that public cloud is too expensive for me, has possible availability problems and potential nested virtualization issues. So now we are ready for our golden option, which is a home lab based on Intel, Intel Nuke. I think that it is pretty reliable if you are a good engineer and don't have regular power or internet outages at your home. It is also a double purpose investment. You can reuse your nukes uh, when you are done with labbing or just sell them. It doesn't load your desktop and doesn't consume a lot of power. Unless your power fee is huge or you are a fire safety geek, you can have it running all day long. It is ready for scaling out and scaling up in the future. Here is a very useful Wikipedia page about nukes when you can find all the information that you need. I will attach a link to the description of this video. So, you are probably are interested in 7th and 8th generation of this particular platform. Here you have all available models under, under Intel kit and uh, all hardware description as well. But of course it has uh, its drawbacks. You have to maintain all the hardware, which is probably the worst thing. At the moment, single platform is limited to 8 vCPUs and 32 gigs of RAM and can't uh, scale up further. For some demanding appliances, like for example VMware VRNI, which stands for VRLIZE Network Insight, uh, it is barely enough. And it obviously has some design limitations. Nuke isn't a server platform, so it doesn't have any out-of-band management interface like ILO or iDRAC or similar. And there is no way to attach enterprise uh, level HBA, HBAs or CNAs if you want to test uh, native fiber channel, fiber channel over Ethernet, 
or for example of loading iSCSI. At least I did not find any way, if I'm wrong please uh, correct me. But at the end of the day it is an optimal solution for me according to my requirements and restrictions. Here is a high level architecture of my lab setup which I will describe in details in the next video. Thank you for watching this video, please put up uh, please put your thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to my channel. See you!